Hello, everyone. My name is Mikhail Shalaginov, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at MIT. And today, on behalf of our photonic materials group, I would like to present your latest results on reconfigurable metasurfaces made of phase change materials. These are the results of our multi-institute collaboration, and I definitely would like to acknowledge all the contributions to this work. In the talk, I will primarily focus on the following three topics. The first one, novel type of phase change materials, or shortly PCM, with broadband transparency. The second one is implementation of very focal metal lens based on this new material platform. And the third one, demonstration of electrically switchable PCM metasurfaces. Beforehand, short intro into the field of metasurfaces. So conventional lens uses geometrical curvature to bend the propagating light. In metasurfaces, the same function is performed using microscopic structures positioned on a flat substrate. In comparison to traditional refractive optics, due to finer features, metasurfaces open up additional degrees of freedom to manipulate light. They are also optically thin and can be fabricated with the standard processes of the semiconductor chip industry. It's really exciting to see the burgeoning of the first startup companies primarily leveraging passive meta-optic technologies. And for all of us, there is still a lot of exciting avenues to explore. One of them is active metasurfaces and metamaterials. This class of dynamic metasystems can switch its functions after being fabricated. A cohort of mechanisms have been showcased to perform switching capabilities. For instance, uh, this could be mechanical stretching, uh, the change in refractive index due to temperature increase, free carry injection, uh, reorientation of liquid crystal molecules, phase change transitions, and many others. So despite the numerous demonstrations, the existing metal optics still possess uh, various drawbacks and require significant improvements in expanding tuning range, enhancing optical quality, and increasing efficiency. So our group, addresses these challenges with the root of phase change materials. Cohogenide phase change materials have been already widely used in optical data storage as uh, elements of solid state drives and nodes of uh, neuromorphic circuits. So these applications hinge on the unique material properties such as gigantic contrast in both optical and electrical responses, as well as non-volatility. By non-volatility, I mean that the external stimuli are only applied when transitioning the material from one phase to another. In this case, from amorphous to crystalline and vice versa. Our group recently developed a new material, germanium antimonide selenium telluride. And it's important that the ratio of selenium to tellurium is actually four to one. On the right side, you can see uh, the film of uh, GSST thermally evaporated. And on the left side is the graph depicting its uh, optical properties, namely refractive index and extinction coefficient K. As you can see, the refractive index actually goes pretty high, particularly for the crystalline state, up to almost five. So which is highly important for all dielectric meta atoms uh, demanding the modes with tight like confinement. There is drastic change in the refractive index from almost three to five uh, when the material undergoes uh, the phase transition. So this feature enables full two pi phase delay tuning range and leads to dynamic metasurfaces with an arbitrary large tuning range. Another unique feature is the broadband transparency, particularly in the mid infrared range for the crystalline state, especially. If we consider the figure of merit, uh, which is uh, the ratio of uh, delta n divided by uh, delta k, so the figure of merit of the GSST is about 100 times larger uh, if compared to the conventional material GST 2 to 5. And this is primarily due to significantly reduced losses in the crystalline phase. So the broadband reduction of losses have been achieved by partially substituting uh, tellurium with selenium. And you can see that at longer wavelengths, the presence of selenium lowers down the free carry absorption, mainly due to the 
reduction of the free carrier concentration as well as their mobility. It also widens the band gap and further pushes the absorption edge to shorter wavelengths. And as an additional benefit, abundance of selenium also significantly improves the glass stability and allows a much thicker PCM films, which is particularly beneficial for constructing matter atoms of high aspect ratio. A GSST film can be a pattern to produce arrays of dielectric microantennas or matter atoms. In this particular case, uh, you can see a Huggins type antenna, which supports a number of modes, such as uh, magnetic and electric type of modes. And of course, other high frequencies. Now, when the material undergoes phase change transitions, we already know that the refractive index drastically increases and noticeably switches the microantenna response uh, by redshifting the resonances, uh, by redshifting the resonances. In the rest of the talk, I will actually show how we harness this collective switching of PCM meta atoms for demonstrating reconfigurable meta optics. And the first example is the non-mechanically actuated high performance varifocal metal lens. So here you can see a schematic illustration of a very focal metal lens functionality. So the GSST pattern has been defined on one side of the transparent substrate. When GSST is in amorphous state, which is um, shown here in blue, the incident light is focused at the focal plane F1, which is 1.5 millimeters here. Afterward, if we switch GSST to crystalline state, now uh, highlighted with a red color, the focal spot will move to the position F2, which is two millimeters away from the matter surface plane. Under the hood, an ideal metal lens can be considered as the continuous phase delay map. So this phase profile is generated by an analytical formula where a focal length acts as the parameter. This is a phase map for a focal length F1, 1.5 millimeter, and this one is for a focal length F2, two millimeters. So now the goal is to switch between the two phase maps. In fact, these phase maps can be in principle of arbitrary shape or pattern, if you wish. And this meta surface switching principle can be extended to multiple, more than just two optical states, or optical functionalities. So we achieve this reconfigurability by changing the refractive index of all meta atoms collectively. Each of the meta atom acts as the phase delay pixel switching between the two phase delay values. For experimental implementation, we have discretized the ideal continuous phase map. How many phase levels to introduce? So here we selected four levels, namely zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two color-coded respectively with red, yellow, green, and blue. Why did we select four phase uh, delay levels? So on the left side, you can see the phase map cross sections. Blue line depicts ideal phase profile and red line, the actual one, which is discretized by the meta atoms periodicity. Obviously, the fewer the number of the phase delays levels, the larger the difference from the ideal performance, or you can think of it as a increased phase error. On the right side, we plotted the dependence of the ultimate optical efficiency of a meta surface versus discretization degree or number of phase levels. So the simple conclusion is the larger the number of phase levels, the higher the efficiency. However, from the design perspective, larger number of phase levels entail significantly extended library of meta atoms. So the number of uh, the meta atoms grows as n squared for the two, uh, uh, for the two uh, phase maps. If it's more than it's n to the order of m, where m is the number of functionalities. So in the case uh, when we have only four phase levels, this would be four to the second power, which is 16. Uh, meta atoms. Also, the larger the number of meta atoms, it becomes tougher uh, on uh, uh, fabrication, particularly 
fabrication tolerance, which implies high sensitivity to fabrication imperfections. After massive numerical calculations, we selected a group of the required 16 net atoms. And here you can see the top views of the uh, meta atoms and their subsequent color coded phase delays for both amorphous, the top row, and crystalline, the bottom row states. By having this meta atom library, we can enable switching between any arbitrary phase maps. Let's come back uh, to our very focal metal lens with uh, two focusing states. And the two maps here illustrate the phase delay errors introduced by the non-ideal responses of the meta atoms in comparison to the original ideal uh, phase maps. I showed out in the earlier slides. As a metal lens design summary, the average meta atom uh, transmittance is 70%. Average induced phase error is pi over four, hence the upper bound on the focus inefficiency is 30%. We have fabricated the GSST metal lens and performed its optical characterization in mid infrared. Particularly, we captured uh, with the camera the focal spots at both focal planes. And this is the metal lens response while GSST is in amorphous state. Most of the propagated power was focused as designed at the primary focal plane F1. The power ratio between the true and the phantom focal spots is 10 to 1. Both of the focal spots are actually diffraction limited, and these have been confirmed by retrieve stray ratio exceeding 0.9. Similarly, good results have been obtained for the crystalline state. Aberration free focusing at the focal plane F2 with even higher power contrast ratio of 90 to 1. So measured focusing efficiencies were 24 for amorphous state and 22 for the crystalline state. And the demonstrated performance still presents major improvements over prior state of the art in very focal metal lens. We also uh, demonstrated high resolution, low crosstalk imaging using our reconfigurable metal lens. So standard resolution charts in the form of horizontal and vertical charts, uh, stripes were uh, fabricated on a transparent substrate and were used as the imaging objects. The metal lens in amorphous state produced clearly resolved image of the chart with a half period of seven micron at the primary focal plane. And no image is observed in the phantom focal plane. The same results were obtained for the metal lens in crystalline state, where the primary and the phantom focal plane got flipped. Additionally, we further show that the metal lens can be used for imaging multi-depth objects with minimal crosstalk. In this test, two resolution targets were each positioned at one focal plane with 45 degree relative in-plane rotation with respect to the other target. So at each optical state of the metal lens, only one resolution target aligning with the specific focal plane was clearly imaged with no sign of ghost image resulting from the other target. So this results prove that the reconfigurable metal lens is capable of producing diffraction limited images free of optical aberrations and crosstalk across overlapping objects at different depths. Next step towards developing this technology is to introduce on-chip electrical controls for controlling phase change metasurfaces. GSST can be reversibly switched between amorphous and crystalline states by heating up the material with electrical pulses. So to transition from amorphous to crystalline, one needs to heat steadily the material above crystallization temperature by long pulses of smaller voltage. The reverse transition from crystalline to amorphous state is accomplished by melt quench process, where the material need to be heated up above the melting point and quickly cool down. In fact, by varying the crystallization pulse voltage, we can also access various intermediate states. This quasi-continuous state tuning has been observed in the 
modulation of the reflectance spectra recorded under different voltages. So we have fabricated an archetypical metasurface representing a 2D array of identical GSST metaatoms. This is actually the first demonstration of the electrical switchable PCM metasurface. The metaatom dimensions were selected to support two distinct hybrid plasmonic photonic modes in their amorphous and crystalline state. So the simulated spectra for the desired modes, as well as the field distributions are shown here. The experimentally measured results agree well with the simulated response. The shaded areas indicate the, experimental, uh, the experimentally assessed cycle to cycle variations for up to 40 switching cycles. Such metasurface demonstrates enormous absolute reflecting contrast of 40% at 149 micron wavelength. This optical contrast is substantially higher than those achieved in active matter surfaces relying on thermo-optic or electro-optic effects. Another distinct feature for this device is enlarged area of the uniform electrical heater, which allows collective switching of matter atoms over the area of 400 by 400 micrometers squared. Here, uh, we further show that besides resonance tuning, the PCM-based active matter service platform can also control optical phase and wavefront. The device consists of only two cylindrical unit cell elements, doublet um, metamolecules. According to this design, in amorphous state, the reflected beam is coupled to the uh, diffractive first order mode with a deflection angle of 32 degree and in crystalline state to the zero order model. The proposed design operates identically for both TA and TM polarizations of the incident light. We experimentally validated the meta service performance by measuring the powers of the light at 55th near wavelength reflected into the zero and plus minus uh, one diffraction orders. So the experimental outcomes are summarized in this bar diagram, the achieved switching contrast ratio was measured to be 8.6 dB, which is in a reasonable agreement with the, uh, with the simulated value of 11 dB and on par with the state of the art active metasurface deflectors. On that, I would like to conclude my talk uh, on phase change reconfigurable metasurfaces and would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you for your attention.